Desi Revolution. Text Zero Texts written in the embers of July 68, going with collages of the same flesh and blood, differing according to edit. One volume out of twenty or so plates where the texts are also mixed up. Too costly a project, it seems, due to the colour. Collages destroyed today. We will propose a different edit without colour. Ashes where the revolution phoenix waits. Still too costly. Debris and a breath remain. Text 1. Reality was dreamt. This is the essence of our violence, the theory of fantasy. It frightened everyone, even us. People ran to the poles like they rubbed their eyes. What I dreamt is stupid. The cock crowed. But desire is not for sale, and you are not quits with the anguish that its approach procures, crudely confirming power by a scrap of paper bearing the name of a patron slipped into the lipless mouth of the system. We want the eye to stay open to the phantasm. To have done with alienation is not to arrange a well-conducted and collaborative discussion of the dialectic, or to be hung on the rope of hermeneutics, not merely to sit oneself down and write, not only to hurl paving stones. It will be to take sides with desire. This side is imperishable. It is already the victor, and always will be. Phoenix we have only to recognize, not organize it. It is the silence in all discourse, even its form, the meaning within signification. It is beauty in the figure, this excess of sense over the simply sensible. We have struggled for beauty. It was the beginning of the first historical revolution. We have not been forced into it by a crisis, and needs had nothing to do with it. The movement was born of an appeal. You will never manage to take it from behind with categories. We have nothing to lose. We will never have anything to lose but our works. Text 2 Form alone lends itself to express the movement of the revolution. Form is revolution. Modern society, east or west, is a stomach coated in tungsten carbide, a very expensive stomach where discourses and figures wear themselves out, crumbling into dust, coming to reinforce the wall that they claim to erode. You want to express what is beyond the system and tawdry needs, where it ruins desire. This last inspires you, although it is the vision of the other. But no, the stomach makes your words, your images, objects, commodities, an identity. Critique, hatred are even incorporated. The dream serves to market consumable fetishes. Everything serves everything, serves to disarm desire, to dissipate its alterity, to obliterate it with the constructive, with the positive, to divert it into reassuring words and things. For a long time now, the class enemies control not only the means of social domination, but also the oldest devices produced at the same time as ourselves to defend ourselves against desire. Repression takes effect in this region of capture at the wellspring. The violence of the collage confronts repression with its own means. The scissor blades of censorship are reversed against their function. Magazine images for selling everything with the allure of a sultry sexuality. Our blades sever its fantasy atmosphere. Now the scene is set so that the infant, polymorphous perversity, is exposed and flaunts itself. Consumer society is its neurotic negative, End of institutional seduction, the ambiguous partition of the forbidden and the proffered. The obscene scene suggested offered as a bonus to every refrigerator buyer. Desire stakes fragments of alienation. By disjoining what a wannabe command has articulated and imposed by displacing and condensing supposedly unrelated elements, the collage performs the dream work in this group of operations that deconstruct given coordinates Transgress regular intervals, violate prohibitions. It is desire that is manifest as movement and force, crushing power and signification as it is manifest in the work of dreaming. The edit has sliced into appearances. The figures produced by the collage display the subversion of figuration, and the subversion is primary. 
phantasm of the Orphic body ripped apart, reassembled into a syntactical disorder, which is the order of meaning within significations. Primitive form exposed. Text 3. The eye is not the organ of one sense. It is the organ of all the senses, and the meaning of all organs. The eye is the master of vertical distance, at the base of which the world is possible. This depth is the secret of form. Without the eye, the figure would have no foundation. The obverse, no reverse. Women, no secrets from men. Speech, hide no silence. This distance between here and seen over there is the most ancient presence of absence. Desire draws half, rule half, deregulation from it. The eye is what transgresses it, sees behind it, sees what it does not see. In this way, desire enters the mirror and reverses it in order to see. The world exists to be reversed, so as no longer to exist. The eye can see nothing without moving. Mobility is its state. To fix upon something is to move oneself at full speed along the edges of hidden aspects of angles and spider's webs, which hold the thing suspended in its surroundings and give it consistency by means of spanning straight lines and curves directed to other things, just as the cupola in Florence is directed towards the surrounding of its hills. The eye's transit is bathed in the grace of the continuous at the opposite pole or ratio everything becomes possible. The savage defamation, woman, tree, pebble, stars of a sun in reverse mountain silhouette, legs, flying fish. Plea to analysts not to forget that the imaginary would itself be impossible if continuity didn't furnish the law on which all their attention is focused, the material condition of the formation of images. The eye equals the other plus the continuous. There is even something to be seen in the said. The form of the discourse is not a property of its signification, doesn't arise from a linguistic framework. It produces sense by dismembering, remembering. Meaning comes violating discourse. It is force or gesture in the field of significations. It is silent. And in the whole the repressed of the word, its subsoil is wakened and arises. The mobilization of the linguistic order opens plastic spaces in it, into which the other order can silently fix itself. Expression is the eye in the discourse, the eye in the ear. But by means of the collage, this work of the eye is manifest in turn. Cutting up recollection operations of the scene can be seen. Thus every oblique identification of yourself with the image is rendered impossible. By looking at it, you see seeing. Power can no longer play with your phantasmatic force. You must recognize this, and this recognition frees you from the vile caress which the system slips over your eyelids and thereby closes your eyes. Text 4 They are progressives like capitalism. They are materialists, but as capitalism is. They are rational with capitalist reason. They want to abolish capital's private property by capitalist means. They pass off as socialism the collective availability of capital according to their hierarchy. Recalling from Marx that labor force is the whole secret of surplus value, they have made the proletariat their business. They are the truth of capitalism. Changing how we live is a sick, childish idea to them. Their poor houses resonate with Lenin. In their priestly hands, Lenin sounds like catechism. Put Trotsky, Mao, Rosa into the kettle drum, the same thump, same sound issues. Revolutionaries, commodities. The disgrace of politicians is the transformation of the past into the truth of the present, the predominance of the done over the doing. The dictatorship of the dead over the living equals capitalization. The politician is then the means of silencing anxiety and the desire for something else, as if the way were marked out, as if what is to be done were written in his legible name on condition of having read the Marx or Bakunin recognizable to experts. 
But this was the very essence of history, the void into which we throw our stones, the absence of a reference, the dark night in which we grope, violence of the absence of sense, unpaved question, hurled in every institution, negativity defies what represses or represents it. In its guise, the pious discourse of political paradise, whether today's or tomorrow's, falls idle. They have not seen this. That what is beginning is not a crisis leading to another regime or system by means of a necessary process. That the desired other cannot be the other of capitalism, because it is of the essence of capitalism to have its other in itself, and that is recuperation. That the other that was openly desired, that is and will be, is the other of the prehistory that keeps us in chains, scream shredded in writing, bludgeoning images, consoling music, warranted intervention, forbidden game broken in two, work, and play, knowledge skitzed into science, love into sex, and society's eye-opener over its domain, the Greek eye. Their politics is used to fill it with sand. What has been announced is the beginning of history, the opening of the eye. They cannot see.